And we're going to read Matthew chapter 1. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 1, beginning of verse 18. Matthew chapter 1, beginning of verse 18. And it reads, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Amen. I want to talk about the real reason for the celebration of Christmas. Look at your neighbor and say, there's a real reason for the, for the celebration of Christmas. All right, you can be seated. For the past 30 to 60 days, much focus is always put on the Christmas celebration. Plans, people make plans, schedules have been adjusted, plane tickets, train tickets, bus tickets have been secured. People have charged their credit card to the max to buy things to make, some, try to make somebody believe that they love them. <laughs> All in the name of Christmas. But for so many people, the real reason for the season has never been discussed or understood or even brought up. We talk about Christmas, but we don't even talk about what the real purpose of Christmas is. Thank you. Come to the front. Wherever you are, come to the front. Where are you? Who said that? Yeah, I need to make a... Oh, that's Deacon. Thank you, Deacon uh, McFarland. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you. Yeah, we, we, we've lost the reason for it. We don't even talk about it. It's all about stuff. What we're buying, what, what we're getting. Uh, churches have shut down on Christmas. What? Let me say that again. Shut down on Christmas? Many people ask me, are we having church on Christmas? Yes, sir, we is and we are. The audacity to ask Pastor Jenkins, are we having church on Christmas? If we ain't going to have it on any other day, we're going to have it on Christmas. People have asked, I've gotten more questions about Santa Claus than I have about Jesus. Somebody asked me the other day, Pastor, what do we tell our kids about Santa Claus? Um... When, when, I, when we were growing up with our kids, my wife and I taught our, taught our kids that Santa Claus was a make-believe character. He's not the reason for the season. And then when our kids went to school and told their friends that Santa Claus wasn't real, and then <laughs> those kids say, the, the pastor's kids say that Santa Claus ain't real parents got mad at us for telling the kids that Santa Claus ain't real. Can you imagine that they got upset because we are teaching our kids truth? Maybe the reason some of your kids have trouble understanding that Jesus is real because you put Santa Claus and Jesus in the same category. They're not the same. We want to make a clear distinction between that the Jesus we serve is a real person. Yeah. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, he real. Yeah. He's, he's truly real. He's not make-believe. He's not a figment of our imagination. He is real. 
And so many of us have lost, so many people have lost the real reason for the whole Christmas celebration. It's not about the stuff you buy. It's not about what's under the tree. It's not about what you get and what you don't get. I want to put to the forefront in this little brief homily I'm giving you today the real reason for the season, and I want you to keep it in the forefront of your mind. There's, there's two specific things I want to talk about the reason for the season. The first one is the person of Jesus. Somebody say the person of Jesus. We're celebrating the person of who he is and what, he's, what he means and what he celebrates, the person of Jesus. He's, he is, first of all, we celebrate him, and he's unique, and we don't put him in the same category as Muhammad or Buddha or Confucius. Why? Why do we put Jesus in such a separate category? We put him there because he had letter A, point one, letter A, sub point A. He had a miraculous conception. Mary's pregnancy was not by the efforts of a man. It was not because she had premarital sex. I know y'all weren't going to say amen on that, but some of y'all don't know it. Y'all know what that is, so act like y'all don't know what it is. She, she had not been having sex with her fiancé, Joseph, but she had been uh, conceived by a divine impartation, which puts Jesus in a separate category from Muhammad and Buddha and Confucius and all the rest of them. It, he's in a unique category. He's, he's different. And the whole purpose is celebrating what distinguishes him from every other so-called God or Savior or Messiah. He's different. He is God. He, he, he is, he, he, his conception was miraculous. We are celebrating the person. That's what, and that what gives him, let it be, a divine nature. That's what makes him different from anybody else. Look at your neighbor and say, that makes him different than anybody else. He, he, he had a divine nature. He is, he is God in human form. He is the manifestation of God coming to earth. John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1 14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. It, this, this, we are celebrating that God made a choice to come and hang out among us. He didn't send an angel. He came himself. Somebody ought to say amen right there. We, we, we celebrate the fact that God came like no other religious leader has ever done. Nobody else can claim this. Only Jesus came, and he is God wrapped up. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a priest, even though he's both of those things. He's not just a king. He's all of that. But he is God in the flesh. God showed up and hang out, hung out among us. This is significant and important. We don't compromise on that. That's what we believe. We, can, we, we don't... We don't accept that he's just a prophet. We don't accept that he's just a man. We don't accept. We believe he is God is among us, Emmanuel. That's why we celebrate that God thought enough about us to travel down through whatever process God had to work out, 42 generations, by the way. He had to come through 42 generations. He had to orchestrate the line that in 42 generations, he worked it out that one day he would be born in a manger. He would be wrapped in swaddling clothes, and he would be the God that has come to hang out with us. He is God in human form. It is the person of Jesus. That's why it's special. That's why we don't get confused and off track. It's more than about the gifts under the tree. It's about the gift that hung on a tree. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying to me today. Uh, he, 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 he is God hanging with us. And it says right here in verse 23, it says, The virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Now, that's important because the devil wants you to think that God would not, doesn't care about you. That devil wants you to think that God is nowhere nearby. But my job is to remind you today that when you get to the club, <laughs> him is right there. 
I feel tension in the room. Don't know why I feel tension in the room. He's among us. You can't escape him. You can't run from him. You can't avoid him. You can't deny him. He, you, 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 you can't escape him. You, you, you can't fool him. He sees you every moment of every day of every place that you go. He sees you. He knows your thoughts. He knows your heart. He knows your motive. He is God with us. Y'all, y'all miss what I'm saying. He, he didn't just come to hang out on the planet 2,000 years ago. He came to live in you. That's what I mean when I say God is with us. When you accept Jesus, he takes residency in your heart. He takes residency in your life. He takes residency in your spirit. He is alive and well. He is God with us. We ought to, somebody ought to be glad about that. That is something we don't debate. We don't argue about it. I'm glad that has has jacked up as I am, as nasty as I am, as messed up as I am, he would choose to come and hang out with me. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, he's hanging out with you. You don't deserve it. You, You haven't earned it. You can't get it by yourself. He made a choice to hang out with me, with you. Look at your neighbor and say, he came to hang out with you with your nasty self. Tell him, tell him, he's with us, he's with us. I'm trying to get you in that spirit. I'm giving God the praise that he would dare, he would dare have the audacity and the nerve to come and be with me. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for what he's done for me. He come to hang out with me. I know you don't think he would do that, but he's with you. When you accept Jesus as your Savior, he's with us. That's the person. That's the unique person that God comes to live in you and take residency in you. Let me close. Here's my second point, and then I'll be finished. I get out of your hair. I'm going to leave you alone. I want to talk about, that's the person of Jesus. Let me talk about the purpose of Jesus. There's a purpose for why he has come. And that's, look at verse 21. And he shall bring forth a son, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. He saves us. He delivers us. He he protects us. I wish I had somebody who understood that even though the devil has plotted your destruction, the devil wants you to be destroyed and killed and defeated and demolished. Jesus said, I come to save you. Can I get an amen from anybody right there? He saves us from our sin. We've offended God. We've missed the mark. We've done wrong. We have, we are sinners. We are unable. We we missed the mark of God's holy standard. We're all sinners. Here's something that's common with every one of you jokers up in here. We is all sinners. We've all failed. We have all missed the holy standard that God has created. Y'all might not want to admit it, but there's something in all of us that's broken. We are broken. We are messed up. But oh, God said, I know you're broken, but I come to heal you and deliver you. I come to fix you. I know you jacked up. I know you're stinking thinking. I know you messed up and tore up from the floor up. I know you're nasty. I know you can't do the right things, don't want to do the right things. I know you keep straying and keep going off the track. But Jesus said, I come to heal you and deliver you and fix you. And I've come to make you whole. I've come 
to fill you with my presence. I come to make you what I created you to be. I have my, his purpose in being here is to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. I've come to make your life worth living. He said, I come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. Somebody ought to give God a praise that that's why he came, that you and I could have life. He came to save us from our sins. Left on our own, we're going down the wrong track. Left on our own, we're messed up, we're tore up, we jacked up. We are going to hell left on our own. But the great news about Christmas is God sent his son to save us. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but all from the bottom of my heart, I give God thanks that he came to save me. Hold up, y'all. Y'all ain't got it. Somebody say y'all ain't got it. Tell your neighbor you ain't got it. You say, I know you're saying me. Out of all of the, why would he come save me? Can he possibly save me? With all that I've done and all the places I've been and all the stuff I did and all the sins I've committed, he would save me? Yeah, nasty you. Jacked up you. Messed up you. Sin filled you. How you know, Pastor? Because look right here. Look, look, this is how powerful it is. Verse 20, the last part of verse 21 says, for he will save his people from their sin. Now, somebody say his people. That's, when you say my people, when you say my people, who are you talking about? You're talking about black people. I don't know what y'all talking about, black people. Them, y'all said, them's my people right there. Them's my people. You're talking about black people, but he's a Jew. And I know there's a lot of debate about whether Jesus was black or European or whatever. There ain't no debate about me, to me, you know, he, he, he was a Jew. <laughs> That's much one thing we do know. But it don't matter to me what color his skin is. His blood is the same color as my blood. Can I get a... That, that's not a debate. Don't, don't discuss with me what color Jesus is. It don't matter. He was God wrapped up in human form and came to the planet to give me life, to save me. But he said, he shall save his people. Somebody say, his people. Say it again, his people. That means his Jewish people, because he came to save his Jewish people. But here's the great news. Here's what I'm shouting about. Yeah, he came to save his people, but they rejected him. And when they rejected him, he opened up the doorway for us to become his people. Somebody holler and say, I'm one of his people. I might not have been in the original plan, but the God we serve is such an awesome God that before the foundations of the world, he made a plan for us to become his people. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm one of his people. I got his name on my chest. I got his name in my heart. I'm one of his people. I'm one of his children. I'm one of his sons. I am one of his children. I am his people. And he came to save his people. Somebody ought to give God a shout that you are one of his people. Somebody dap up two or three people say, I'm a his people. I'm one of his people. I'm one of his persons. You tried to count me out. The devil tried to write me off. They tried to dismiss me, but he made me one of his people. He put my name, his name on me. I'm one of his people. 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 He made me his person. That, and that's why this season is so special. Because he brought us into his family. 
Don't miss it. Don't escape that he brought us in. We were aliens on the outside looking in, but he opened it up and brought us to the inside. Somebody ought to give God a shout right here. John 1.12 says, he came into his own and his own received him not. When they rejected him, they opened up the door for us to walk in. I'm here. <laughs> and we are a part of the family of God. And that's why I'm giving God a shout and a praise. That's the real reason for the celebration of Christmas. The person of Jesus and the purpose of Jesus. That's what the whole, that's what it's all about. And somebody here today, I, 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 somebody brought you here or somehow you stumbled in here or somehow you came in here. I don't know how you got here, but you've never met the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Or, or maybe you're not in the right place with the Lord Jesus. He came that you could have life and have life more abundantly. And I want to invite you to come and say yes to him. I, I want to make an appeal to you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He died on the cross. He came and died on the cross to save us from our sins. He died on the cross. He took the punishment that you and I deserve. We should have got the punishment, but he took our place. And I want to invite you to come and say yes to him. Backslidden, unsure, or you're not saved, you never accepted Jesus, get out of your seat and say, you know what? I want Jesus. I want, I want to make, I want to yield to his lordship of my life. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. The moment you come, we're going to shout and give God the praise. The angels are going to dance. If you don't know the Lord right now, right this moment, right now, Jesus died so you could be forgiveness. Amen. Right now is the time to come. I see you. Amen. Come on. Praise him. Praise him. That's right. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. That's right. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Right now. Right this moment. Right this instant. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So proud of you. Amen. So proud. So proud. So proud. So proud. That's right. I see you. Come on. Amen. Come, come, come. We, we offer Christ to you, oh my brother. So proud. We offer Christ to you, oh my He will give you brand new life. He will give you brand new life. Life abundantly. Life abundantly. So, so come. Come on. Come on. To Christ. To Christ. Maybe somebody's here and... You, you're saved, but you don't have a church. This here Amen. is a great church for you to be a part of. You come right now. You, you can come and join and become a member of the First Baptist Church. But not if you're in that category, you come. So if you're in any one of these categories, you're not saved, you haven't accepted Jesus, you're backslid, you want to rededicate yourself to God, you're unsure, you want assurance, or you're already saved and you want to join our church, Right now would be the time for you to come. Come right this moment, right this instant, and say yes to God. Anybody else, come right now. Go ahead, sing that through one more time. One more time, sing it. To Christ, oh, 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 we, we, oh. Oh, 
online, you go ahead and respond too. We're, we're waiting on you to respond. I thank those of you who had the courage to come here and come down here today. Praise the Lord. You. Standing with you as a counselor, they're going to take you to a room and talk with you, minister to you, give you some instructions. Father, I thank you for those who have responded, that have come. I know you know them each by name. I pray that you manifest yourself to them. Forgive them. Cleanse them. Fill them with your spirit, almighty God. Forgive them of their past, their sin, their wrong, and make them your children. Plant them in your vineyard. Fill them with your spirit. Restore them in their walk with you. Meet their needs, whatever it might be. In Jesus' name, amen.